Hi, I'm Nate and you're watching Photo Learningism. I wanted to go through the differences between GIMP and Krita. There's a lot of talk out there about which is better for photographers as an image manipulation tool. So let's get into that. Okay, so jumping right in, I'm gonna give a little backgroundness for us going on here. Why not, if you're in the mood. Jumping right into GIMP, one of the first things I noticed is it does not work with Nikon raw images out of the box. Why is that? I will demonstrate and prove this. If I grab a NEF and I drag that onto the workspace, this is what you get. That you have to add in additional third party raw loaders for that to work. I think that's kind of a no-brainer and especially because the tool is branded as a photographer's tool and I'll prove that to you if I pull up the GIMP main page hop in and over here let's look right here whether you are a graphic designer photographer illustrator or scientist dot 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 it's branded as a photographer's tool raw should be available right out of the box all right <laughs> That's point number one. Krita does support RAW right out of the box. I'll bring that up here on the side and I will show the same thing. I will grab the same NEF. I'll bring that over here and that will load. It actually gives you the option of working with that RAW format, changing the white balance, adding in some color enhancement or correction, and up it comes after a moment or so. <laughs> but. That is a big deal for a photographer's image manipulation tool. It may not matter so much to graphic artists or other illustrators, but for photographers, this is huge. The tool has to support RAW. That's what photographers work in. That's a standard these days, okay? So that would be my nitpick, number one. Moving on, the gradient tool in GIMP is not great. I'm gonna actually have to bring in a JPEG here so I can demonstrate this. Let's bring in an image. I'm going to keep the color palette that it has and bring up the gradient tool here and drag that in. And if you can see it, it may be hard over the screen capture here, but it just looks like a cheap tool. It's not very smooth, it's blocky, it's pixelated. It's not a tool I would feel comfortable using on my professional tools, my professional pictures. So that I'm really not pleased with and I really don't think I could get much use out of. In Krita, I'll cross demonstrate that. We have the same gradient tool and you can see how clean, how refined that is how seamless the effect blends from black into transparency. That's what I'm looking for. I'm not sure why this is such a big problem in GIMP, especially considering that people talk about that as the de facto image editing tool. And I don't want to get off on the track that GIMP is bottom of the ladder here. That's not what I'm aiming to do. This is not a dump on GIMP. I'll get to some good stuff, I promise. But I'm kind of coming out of the gate with the things that affected me most because these are the things that I'm looking for. So as a gradient tool, and what I would refer to as the vignette aspect, that's not so good, okay? Moving on to another thing, in that the interface here, at least coming into this from Photoshop, from paint.net, from other tools that I have used, this layout really confused me. <laughs> it was kind of counterintuitive for where I would expect to find things. I've become really used to either having floating panels or having most of my tools on the right hand side. It was a little counterintuitive to have tool controls along the left and you could argue, yeah, you can customize the stuff and make it what you want. Coming out of the box, it should be as friendly to the first time user as possible. And it should be expected that they should be coming in with an expectation of where things are. Nobody's really coming into this cold. They've all used software before, specifically photo software before. There needs to be a little more attention to that layout and what makes sense. Okay, so that I wasn't too pleased with either. Now, 
<laughs> Let's get to the good stuff. Now that I spent all this time dumping on that, I want to talk about the good stuff. Because I did look at this and, and find some stuff that I had to say that is valuable in the positive side. So it does have some good perspective tools. Krita lacks a little bit in that area. It's hard to get to. GIMP did a good job of employing perspective. There's a nice handy tool right here. And I really felt like that was well done. And it actually renders the effect in real time. It was easy to get results and kind of get that perspective that I was after very quickly. So I will applaud that effort. I think that's that's quite good. There are some other 3D space effects you can get to where you can kind of fold it like a page. And again, those are really snazzy. Those are cool. And I think those are nice enhancements for photo alteration, specifically if we're going to do graphic design. I know that has kind of limited use in photo editing, like as a photographer. Um, every now and then I do graphic images, but it's a nice touch to the program that renders very cleanly, and I'll highlight that. Coming at it strictly as a photographer, the things that I found valuable were that you have the usual tools you would expect under colors here and it's called what you'd expect as well that was a problem i had in krita for example here saturation that's self-explanatory you can work with that and you can uh, easily understand what that's supposed to do provided that the tool doesn't crash out from under you <laughs> while that's thinking it over the equivalent here on the krita side would be the cross-channel adjustment curves. Completely different name. That kind of threw me when I first started using Krita. The control is a little different. It's based on a rubber band approach, which you can get used to. But again, it was different. And that was one of my gripes when I first started using Krita. Here we go. So saturation, vernacular makes sense. That I appreciate. That's a good thumbs up on that one. <laughs> Other good uh, things to highlight here are the curves. I was very familiar with curves coming at that from paint.net. This made a lot of sense. Where it's located in the menus, it's very logical and it works the same way. That was beautiful. As a photographer, if you can find commonalities in the vernacular and in the interface and in the tool, that just makes our lives so much easier, especially if we're considering moving to a different product. If we don't have to relearn how to use things, it makes it so much easier. <laughs> so Krita did have a piece like this. Again, a little tough to find. That's called color adjustment curves. If you're not looking for the difference in keyword, once you get into it, it's similar, not exactly the same, but you can work with it. So good moves on the GIMP side for keeping the same labeling, the same talk, the same terminology um, that I really appreciated as a photographer. The last piece I really wanted to highlight is the smudge tool. Uh, that was something that I still kind of find lacking in uh, the Krita world. Um, didn't really have it. <laughs> and um, it just is something I feel like is missing in Krita. If there's a way to do that, I would love to know it. Um, but this was really intuitive. It's available as a tool right from the get-go. And uh, yeah, that is just missing in action here on the Krita panel. Even if I drag that out, yeah, it's not here. So that's kind of a missed opportunity. You could argue, well, well what's the value in smudging? Well, sometimes you just need to be able to shift pixels over in a controlled way. <laughs> it's not an everyday thing, I'll concede that but it does come up. Every now and then you're gonna face a scenario where cloning is not gonna get the job done. You need something to, to work with the colors and the pixels that are in your image. So I'm glad to see that's here. That's, that's a valuable asset that you don't have to go and figure out how to do separately. So another thumbs up on that one and well worth it. So having gone over these, these were the biggest items that I would look at. Um, again, I'm looking at this mostly as a photographer. You would look at this completely differently as an illustrator, as a graphic designer. There's different value in the different tools. I'm looking at it as a photographer, and I'm, I'm really kind of picking that apart because it's branded as a tool for photographers. So from that perspective, I would have to say that overall, 
GIMP probably wouldn't be the one I reach for off the shelf here, so to speak. These are both open source. They're both free tools, GIMP and Krita. I, I am still swayed to using Krita, and I'm slightly biased because I was using that first before I came here, but Krita does offer a lot of powerful capabilities that I've just found to be more uh, in tune with what I'm seeking as a photographer. It had the tools I needed. It did not need a lot of enhancement coming out of the box, and the out-of-the-box support for raw images is just huge. Without having to finagle the product to do that with third-party stuff is just an unnecessary headache uh, coming into this. So you can go ahead and make your own judgments. I'll pose the question to you. Which one do you use? Do you use GIMP? Do you use Krita? Tell me why. Let's talk about it. Let's find the good uses for each. I'm not going to say don't use either one, but let's talk about the, the uses that we get out of it because it's a free tool. It's got value in that. And let's build each other's knowledge in this community that I'm working hard to do under the photo learningism learning environment. Um, again, I'm Nate. Uh, we do a lot of videos on this channel for covering tools like this open source. I'm a photographer and I love looking at editing my pictures and taking pictures and talking about them and finding ways to work on them. I'm a big proponent of paint.net. You can go check out my other videos for that as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you again in future uh, videos. Take care.